largest structure on Earth is 4,000 years old, visible from space, and wasn't built by humans. It's not aliens either, but it is as close as it can get. Furthermore, the amount of soil excavated to build the structures averages over 10 cubic kilometers, which is equivalent to just about 4,000 Great Pyramids of Giza. Mysterious mounds were not built by human hands, but rather by termites. According to a study published in Current Biology, the vast array of regular space termite mounds are still inhabited to this day. The mounds are so large that they are visible from Google Earth. Scientists say they are not nests. These structures are the result of the insect's slow and steady excavation of a network of interconnected underground tunnels, explains researchers. According to researchers, the termites' activities over periods of thousands of years has resulted in massive quantities of soil being excavated and deposited in approximately 200 million cone-shaped mounds. The mounds average about 2.5 meters in height and as much as 9 meters across. These mounds were formed by a single termite species that excavated a massive network of tunnels to allow them to access dead leaves and eat safely and directly from the forest floor, says Stephen Martin of the University of Salford in the UK. Despite being one of the largest structures on Earth, the massive mounds remain well hidden from view, tucked away in the semi-arid, thorny scrub forest unique to northeastern Brazil. Soil sample analysis taken by experts from the center of the mounds indicate that they were filled 690 to 3,820 years ago. The mound pattern created by the termites is thought to have come into existence through self-organizational processes. The mounds are interconnected by vast tunnels, which allow termites to minimize their travel time from any location in the colony to the nearest waste mound, giving them access to a sporadic food supply. It's incredible that in this day and age, you can find an unknown biological wonder of this sheer size and age still existing, with the occupants still present, experts concluded. Curiously, the Queen's Chamber has never been found. Prehistoric Town of Akrotiri a Bronze Age settlement on the Greek island of Santorini might have been the inspiration for Plato's Atlantis. Tucked away at the southern tip of Santorini are the ruins of one of the Bronze Age's most sophisticated settlements, which prospered for centuries before being eradicated by a great volcanic eruption. Like the Roman ruins of Pompeii, the remains of the Minoan town of Akrotiri are remarkably well-preserved. The settlement was all but obliterated in the middle of the second millennium BC when the volcano it sat upon, Thera, erupted, and its inhabitants fled. The volcanic matter enveloped the entire island of Santorini and the town itself, preserving the buildings in their contents, and visitors can still identify houses and pots. Unlike Pompeii, no human remains have been found at Akrotiri, and only one gold object was found on the site, suggesting that the Minoans performed an orderly evacuation before the eruption, and they had time to take their valuables before they fled. The Minoan civilization existed on Crete and its surrounding Greek islands, and flourished from approximately 3600 BC to 1400 BC. The eruption of Thera has been credited with its demise. Geologists have called it the most destructive natural event in recorded history. The town of Akrotiri was an outpost of Crete, which dates back to the 3rd millennium BC and gradually developed into one of the main ports and urban centers of the Aegean. Akrotiri was incredibly sophisticated for its time. The buildings in the town were multi-storied and faced with masonry, and the elaborate drainage system was highly evolved. It is here that we see some of the first instances of indoor lavatories. The town's elaborate architecture and vivid frescoes indicate a highly cultured settlement. It is perhaps this level of sophistication that has led scholars and historians to believe that Akrotiri served as Plato's inspiration for the city of Atlantis. In his dialogues Timaeus and Critias, Plato wrote of an island on which there was a great and wonderful empire, which was suddenly destroyed. There occurred violent earthquakes and floods, and in a single day and night of misfortune, all your warlike men in a body sank into the earth, Plato wrote, and the island of Atlantis, in like manner, disappeared in the depths of the sea. Some scholars have argued that Plato's description of the sudden obliteration of Atlantis is parallel to the eruption of Thera and the subsequent destruction of Akrotiri. Since Akrotiri is a modern name given to the settlement after the nearby town of the same name, there is no way of knowing what the original inhabitants knew their home as, 
Perhaps it was Atlantis. A mini terracotta army. Archaeologists find hundreds of warrior statues in ancient Chinese pit. Archaeological excavations in an ancient Chinese pit have revealed the presence of a miniature terracotta army that has remained undisturbed for more than 2,000 years. The figures, which measure between 20 and 30 centimeters, bear a great resemblance to those of the famous terracotta warriors built for Qin Shi Huang, the first emperor of China. Qin Shi Huang, which means first emperor of Qin, was the founder of the Qin dynasty and was the first emperor of a unified China. In addition to building the massive terracotta army most people remember him for, he was also the first ancient Chinese ruler to search for an elixir that would allow him to live forever. According to the state news agency Xinhua, an analysis performed on 2,000-year-old texts, which are believed to date back to the emperor's rule, have revealed a strong obsession the emperor had for an elixir that would bring him eternal life. He claimed that his dynasty would last at least 10,000 generations. The documents in question, as explained by the Smithsonian, belong to a cache of around 36,000 wooden strips inscribed with ancient calligraphy. The documents were discovered in an abandoned well in a county in the western Hunan province in 2002. The documents, wooden strips, were commonly used as writing materials in ancient China. They date back from around 259 BC to 210 BC, which according to experts is a period that overlaps with the emperor's rule. The Mini Terracotta Army According to reports, in the miniature terracotta army, we can distinguish cavalry soldiers, some of them guiding chariots, and about 300 infantry warriors. There are also figures representing musicians and watchtowers. According to Live Science, the pit that contained the miniature army is located near the Chinese city of Linzi. The discovery of the army was made in 2007, and the first study performed on the remains appeared in 2016, although written in Chinese and published in Wen Wu, the Institute of Archaeology of the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences. Since the study was published in Chinese, no one really paid much attention to what had been discovered until it was eventually translated and published in Chinese cultural relics. From there, the discovery, as well as the study, were picked up by the rest of the world. It is believed that the pit, thought to date back some 2,100 years, could belong to the prince Liu Hong, one of the children of Wu, the seventh emperor of China. The form and scale of the pit suggest that it accompanies a large burial site, wrote archaeologists in a paper published recently in the journal Chinese Cultural Relics. The vehicles, cavalry, and infantry in square formation were reserved for burials of the monarchs or meritorious officials or princes, the archaeologists wrote. Archaeologists maintain that the figures were manufactured a century later than the life-size terracotta army on which they would have been inspired. 